Hey everyone, so just a quick note, two intros on this video. Um, the microphones do change later on in the video when I go to the pass-through mode on my headset. So I use the internal microphone, so just keep that in mind. Volume's a little bit all over the place with this one, but it was a, it was a bit necessary. So with that said, we're going to take a look at how to do hand tracking with the MetaQuest 3, and then how we can use Unreal Engine 5.3.2. So with that said, let's jump over to the actual start of the video, so you guys can see how it goes. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're going to look at doing hand tracking for the Quest 2, 3 and Pro. Um, I'm going to be using the 3 for this one, if you're part of the series. But um, what you will need to do is have the MetaXR plugin installed. If you don't know how, there's a link in the description for you to be able to do that. And we're just going to use the default version of Unreal 5.3.2 from the Epic Mega Launcher. So this has been highly requested which is getting hand tracking to work in the Quest 3. And we're going to take a look at actually adding depth to that as well. So I've already done a video on setting up pass through for the Quest. But in this case, we're going to set that up again, just so everybody's on the right track and then we know what everyone's up to. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a virtual reality template, just so we can keep this simple. We'll use the meta pass through folder that I have. And then meta actually we'll call this hand tracking pass through if i spell it right and it's like no we're not happy because it's longer than 20 so hand track let's just call it hand tracking if you want access to these folders they'll be able to patreon through the mega thank you tier so make sure you head over there and you can get early access to the next video as well cool so hand tracking we're going to create our vr template and I'm going to show you how to fix an area where the pass through when you build it to the headset can be black and hands don't appear. So we're going to wait for this to load up. I already have the MetaXR uh, plugin enabled. So we're going to go to plugins, virtual reality. We're going to tick the MetaXR plugin. And what we want to do actually is go down to virtual reality and we're going to untick OpenXR and we're going to untick the other two as well. So open XR eye tracking and hand tracking. We want to make sure those those are off by default. And we're only using the virtual reality plugin or Meta XR plugin, sorry. So we're going to restart, wait for that to boot up. And while that boots up, I'm going to say a big thank you to all Patreons for making this possible. Like I wouldn't be able to just put the time into this to be able to like keep the channel going. So it's big help. Thank you so much. And if you want access to the files early, make sure to head over there. And you also get your name in the credits at the end of the video. So check it out. <laughs> Oh, Discord as well. Got it. Kill some time. This is taking much longer to boot up than normal. Don't know why it's still got 75%. Be fine in a minute though. All right, be back in a minute. Cool. So now we've booted up. You'll see that you have a warning for missing plugins. We can kind of ignore this, so we can just do dismiss, and then don't send. So if we go to project settings, we're gonna have to set a pass through first because I want to show you how to do the depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to rendering. If you've seen the previous video and you've already got that, you can skip this. And then we're going to scroll down in the rendering tab and set enable alpha channel support and post processing experimental to allow through tone mapper. Once we've done that, we can keep scrolling down and we want to find our meta XR plugin. And in here, we want to change a couple of things. We want to go down to supported MetaQuest devices. I'm going to hit this three times to support each one. We then want to do composite depth. And we want to set hand tracking, uh, hand tracking support to hands only. This will require your headset to have hand tracking enabled. If not, the application won't work. And then hand tracking frequency high and hand tracking version V2. So these are the main ones for the hand tracking. It's not really so much used for the pass-through, but we need these enabled so we can actually access them. We're then going to enable pass-through enabled, and then anchor support, anchor sharing, scene support. If you're doing pass-through, you're probably going to use those, so might as well have them. And then support experimental features, we're going to set that to true. Cool. So controller pause alignment. I had mine set to aim for my hand tracking. It worked pretty well. And then we're going to go to VR template. And we're going to just set this up for pass through. So we're going to delete our sky, some walls, pretty quick. 
and then the floor as well. That stuff will fall down, but it'll be fine. We just want to use this as a test. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a cube in here. I'll just duplicate one that already exists. And then scale it to about 0.2. Just this way, we can actually test the depth is working on the controllers. So that's pretty much it for pass through. Uh, no, it's not. I'm getting ahead of myself. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the player. So VR Pawn. And we'll start by setting up pass through. So we want to select the camera. Go to add and then search for pass through. And then with that highlighted, we want to select support depth, no alpha channel, and then stereo layer shape. We want to set that to reconstructed pass through layer. If we drop down this, we want to set layer placement to underlay. Cool. So that's it for our, uh, for our pass through. That should work now. Mine's a bit sketchy doing play and editor, so I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to wait till it's finished and then we'll do build. And then we can actually set up our hands. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete our hand left and hand right. And if we press compile, you'll see that it breaks our inputs down here. So we're going to select this entire area and just delete it because we don't actually need that anymore. And then if we compile, it will remove those errors. And then once we've got that, we can actually select our left grip, which is where our hands were before. And we want to scroll down on the right and we want to change motion source just to left. And then we want to do the same thing with our motion controller right grip. We want to change this to right. And now we can actually add the hands. So with motion controller right grip, we're going to do add and then search for hand. You say Oculus XR hand. And then let's rename this to Oculus XR hand right. And then we do the same thing for motion controller left grip. We'll do hand, Oculus XR hand, capital L for left. And then we can actually go through and select these components and set them up. So the way the hands work is they're attached to the motion controller. And I find when I first set this up, they were offset slightly. So the hands didn't match up. So what I ended up doing is I positioned these to work a little bit better. So if I can find my original template for the motion controller left, what we're going to do is we're going to use minus 5.5 on the X. So minus 5.5. And then for the right, we want to change this to minus six. You can play around with this value to get them to line up a lot better and the rotation. But for what I was doing, I found this worked pretty well. So with Oculus XR hand right selected, we want to go to skeleton type and mesh type, and we want to set both of those to hand right. And then for the material override, we want to set this to pull the hole. So pull the hole material. And then we also want to do update hand scale. We're going to do the same thing for the Oculus XR hand left. So skeleton type, this is the left hand now. Mesh type, left hand update hand skill and then material override we want poker hall poker hall material cool so with that done you can't go ahead and build uh, you probably want to be able to do that and then test it out but the poker hall material won't work so what we're going to do is we're going to change that now however what I want to do is show you what happens if I do play an editor so I have play an editor set up on the headset with oculus and I have develop runtime features and pass through over link enabled. And I'm pretty much showing you this because I'm hoping somebody might be able to tell me in the comments what the hell's going on. But if we go to VR preview, you'll see it'll take a second to boot up. And when it does, we can pop in. And I can see, but in the headset, I can't see anything and hands don't work. Cool, so that's pretty much it. So if we back this out, you'll see that I get this crazy error. And this is what I'm hoping somebody can help me with because I do not know what's going on. So if anybody can help me with this, honestly, I'd love you forever. Then let me know in the description below or head over to the Discord. I'll make a video on it if I can do a tutorial and fix it, which would be super handy. But because of that, we're gonna have to build the APK to the headset so I can test it. Um, but before we do that, we wanna fix that poker hole material. We wanna go to the material itself. So the easiest way is to go back to the VR pawn. Double click the material override, so the poker hole material. This will open it up 
If you don't do this, it will appear as the default checker pattern on the hands. But in the material details list, we want to move that up, scroll down, and select use with skeleton mesh. Once you've done that, we can actually go ahead and build the template and we can take a look at how it goes. So I'm going to go to project settings and then Android configure. If you want to set this all up, I've got a video on the channel showing how to do that. And then make sure that matches and then we just platform Android package project. And once this is built, we'll head over to the, the headset and I'll show you what's going on. Hey everyone, I just did the build and I realized I ticked a box I wasn't meant to. So if you go to project settings and make sure composite depth is disabled, then you'll actually see the entire environment when you build the project. So we want to hit file, save all, and then platforms, Android package project. Um, testing, hand tracking and pass through doesn't work for me like I've shown. Um, same as the hand tracking, I just can't get that to work. So typically build the APK, test it in there. <coughs> That's your best that's your best method anyway. And then you can kind of come back to it from there. But once it's set up, it's pretty much done really. You can kind of just get on with everything else. So um once I figure that out, I'll let you know how to fix all that. But it's probably just an engine bug or something. I might just be fixing a different update. Cool. So we just wait for this to build and then we'll hop over to the headset. Awesome. So we've hopped over to the headset. We're gonna try and do this before my battery dies, because I've been very bad at it today. Um, so project's called hand tracking. I'm just going to select that with hand tracking enabled. If you don't have that already, you can go to settings and then search for hand tracking. So hand and body tracking. And then if you do that, you can enable it to, to go through there for permissions. And then I think hand has its own. Or it might just be hand and body tracking and hands. There it is. So hand and body, yeah, it's the same page. Just make sure hand and body tracking is on. And then you should be able to actually go from there. This is just because we're using hands only for the application. So we need to make sure that's enabled. So in the project, we can go to unknown sources, hand tracking. We can boot this up, wait for it to load. And then we can see, got my hands. And if I hold them up to a static mesh, you can see that they're occluded. And if we move them around, you know, so there's a cube that we dragged into the scene near our stuff. So we go up to it, we can see our hands through pass through, and then we can bring them around the back and around the front. And I'm going to tilt my head down because I think you can see it a little bit better, but you can see how we actually use this to create some pretty cool stuff. To be fair, it actually feels really cool. So what we'll do is in the next video, I'll show you how to scan your room. And then we can come back and we can make one of the weapons spawn on the desk and go from there. And go pew 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 pew, which would be pretty fun. And we'll see if we can actually make this guy move. But for that, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to change the hand tracking back to motion controllers. So we can do the grab stuff and then we've got all the inputs set up for that. I just find it a little bit easier. So if you're doing hand tracking, this is pretty much it. You're good to go. You can do what you want. Um, Go play with a cube and go touch things, which is pretty wicked. So, so what you can do in the meantime, if you want access to these files to check against yours, they'll be up on Patreon. And then you can get access, early access to the other stuff as well through the mega thank you tier once that goes up. So, in the meantime, thank you so much to everybody on Patreon. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this, make it possible, and pay the rent, which is really nice. And... Until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.